All right, so I'm gonna be showing you how to create a 3D animated effect on a sphere using a mask. And so for this example, I've downloaded a world map texture from the internet. And the idea is I'm gonna create the effect that we've got the globe spinning on its axis in 3D. All right, so I'm just gonna delete this for now. And first things first, I'm just gonna make the shape of my globe. So I'm gonna go straight over to the oval tool and make my sphere. So I'm just going to make quite a big oval shape and I'm just using the red for the moment and it doesn't actually matter what color it is because it's going to be used for a mask shape only. All right, great. So next I'm going to go to my layer and I'm just going to call it mask. And then I'm going to make a new layer underneath. And this is going to be my texture layer. So I'm just going to call it texture. And before I do anything else, I'm going to go back to my mask layer and just lock it and also put on an outline mode so you can't see the inner fill, it just shows the outline of it, which is really handy. All right, great, so back to my texture layer, and I'm gonna just drag in my world map image. And so first things first, I'm just gonna make sure it actually fits inside of the sphere, which it does. And then next, I'm just gonna zoom out because the image is quite big. And I'm gonna copy the image, paste it, and then just sort of snap it to the end of my previous image here. Uh, just move it along slightly. So now we have this sort of uh, seamless repeated texture of my world map. And this is really important when looping the texture. So I'm just gonna shift select both of these so they're both selected and then make it into a symbol so it's combined both of these images into one selectable object. And now I'm gonna animate the actual looping of the texture. And this is by far the most tricky part of the process. And so I'm just gonna drag this over to the start here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a point of interest which is gonna help me loop the texture. And so I'm gonna make the point of interest the edge of this Australia continent. And to help me, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna make a quick guide layer. So I'm just gonna insert a new layer, just call it guide. And then I'm just going to make a line. Let's make a big green line. I'm going to put it at the edge of my Australia continent, which is my point of interest here. All right, great. So it's time to animate. So I'm going to add some frames to my animation. I'll make about 25 frames. So I'm going to make insert frame from my guide layer, insert frame from my mask. And then for my texture, I'm going to be animating this. So I'm just going to right click, go to classic tween, and then make a keyframe at the end. All right, great. So now to drag my texture along. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure it keeps snapping to the X axis here. And I'm pretty much going to drag it right back to where it was. So as you can see, it's right back on the edge of the Australia continent. But if I do this and uh, just have this playing, it won't actually animate seamlessly. It won't loop seamlessly because it will. it's basically showing the same frame twice. So it'll be a bit jittery. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use my keyboard to just sort of move it slightly to the left like this. So it's got a bit of spacing. And this will make sure it's a seamless loop. All right, great. So I'm just going to delete my guide layer because I don't need it anymore. And then I'm going to go back to my mask layer put it back to normal mode, unlock it, and just go right click and mask. And now if I go to my publish preview, you will see that it loops seamlessly here. So it's gonna loop continuously forever. And so we already have pretty much the whole effect here, but there's a few more little uh, effects I'm gonna add on to make it a bit more believable. So next I'm gonna make uh, a new layer. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a bit of shading and so I'm gonna have it sort of a bit of a gradient shade. So it gives it a bit more of a sort of 3D sphere effect rather than just a sort of flat oval shape. So I'll just call this one shading. And then I'm going to uh, go back to my mask layer, select this mask shape, go to edit, copy, lock it again, go back to my shading layer and just go to edit, paste in place. And this means that it pastes it in, in exactly the same coordinates as it was previously in. So now we have this new shape directly on top. I'm gonna to select it, go to color, and then go down to radial gradient. All right, great. So now I'm gonna make both of the gradient bits black. 
and I'm going to make this one have zero alpha. So now the middle bit is completely transparent. And then for this one, I'm going to make the alpha about 40. And so now if you look at the effect that's created, it's a bit more of a shading effect, so it makes it appear a bit more 3D. Okay, so lastly what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make a new layer underneath all of the layers and it might go as a mask layer by default and so I'm just going to go and put on to a normal layer and so now it's normal. And then I'm just going to call this space and I'm just, I'm just going to lock the rest of the layers and so in my library I'm going to bring out uh, a other texture off the internet which is just a space texture, put it behind everything and then do a final publish preview. And there we go, we've got our effect in motion, and obviously the globe is spinning incredibly fast, but you get the idea. So you can apply this effect to many different graphics and textures, and it's really handy to create a sort of fake 3D effect uh, in many different instances. All right, so I hope you found this tutorial useful, and if you wanna see more videos like this in the future, please subscribe.